Okay. So now we are ready for Heber and Heba, I would ask you to introduce yourself, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christian. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Heba. I am from Palestine. Uh, at the moment, I live in Gaza Strip. Um, uh, I received a master degree in midwifery last year from the University of Aberdeen in Scotland. And now I am working as a clinical instructor um, at some local universities in Gaza, and also working as a clinical uh, as a clinical um, uh, midwife uh, at a maternity hospital in Gaza too. Uh, so uh, this presentation it's a part from my uh, master thesis. And I am happy uh, to be here and to participate in this conference and hope that everyone will enjoy uh, this presentation. I will start now with my presentation. A presentation is about women's experiences of a childbirth in the Arab world, a systematic review of equitative and quantitative, quantitative evidence. Um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this picture was on the day of my graduation ceremony at the University of Aberdeen. Um, I am the second one from the right. Uh, the, the first one from the right uh, side, um, she's my first supervisor. Uh, her name is Lucia uh, de Ambrosio. And the third one, uh, she's um, Helen Bitford, uh, uh, my second supervisor. And the fourth one, uh, 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 she's uh, Alice Kajal. Uh, she is the external uh, examiner for my thesis, and I am pleased to tell you that I was honored to win her prize for the best uh, midwifery nursing um, uh, research project at the college. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will start with um, a simple introduction about the Arab world. Uh, the Arab world occupies a large geographical area which com uh, comprises 22 Arabic countries. Um, in the Arab world, marriage is considered the gate to childbirth because it represents the only foundation within which childbirth is allowed as well as that childbirth is viewed as the purpose of the marriage. A childbirth is major life event and a special life story and emotional experience for women. Women's experiences and their stories of a childbirth are therefore relevant in developing evidence-based care uh, on individual subjective narratives. So, there is an urgent need for women's experiences to be incorporated into health services and health policies toward improving the quality of care in maternity services. Um, just um, a simple notice, I am sorry about what you're hearing from my background. I cannot stop the sound, it's from open area and I, I am absolutely close to the room but I can't, I, you can, you still can hear the sound. Anyway, uh, there's a report from the United Nations. Uh, Okay, <laughs> thank you. There's a United Nations uh, report demonstrated a substantial uh, decrease in fertility rates uh, among uh, Arab women in most countries except Iraq, Yemen, Palestine, and which is my country, Sudan, Somalia, Mauritania, and Comoros. The total fertility rate remains over four live births. Uh, per woman reproductive age for the this 
seven countries uh, that I mentioned, which indicates continuing high rates uh, of fertility for some poor and rural areas. The, as you know, the geopolitical status of the Arab world nowadays is complex and challenging due, due to state of the crisis and armed conflict areas such as Iraq, Yemen, Syria, Palestine, and Libya. So these circumstances undermine the health system and cause emergency health situation because of the occupation, eternal civil strife, and political tension. Uh, there are compar comparatively fewer studies addressing satisfaction, maternal satisfaction, sorry, and exploring women's reported experiences as an outcome of maternity care in the Arab world compared to Europe and United Kingdom. Therefore, it has been worthwhile in this paper to focus on women-centered care during the childbirth experience to develop recommendations towards influencing health professionals and policy to improve health systems and make real change. So, the aims and objectives from this paper was to to addressing these two questions. The first one was what are women's views and experiences of labor, birth, when accessing delivery services in the Arab world? And the second, the second question is what does the evidence suggest for policy and practice? The methods for uh, this paper was a systematic review uh, accompanied by a, a synthesis of the qualitative and the quantitative studies uh, describing women's experiences in birth and labor in the Arab world. The elements of uh, textual narratives and thematic synthesis methods was used to analyze uh, the data from selected study. Uh, also, uh, my experience and uh, reflections um, of uh, my professional by, uh, background uh, was also incorporated in, uh, for the result of this paper to support the, the, the interpretation of the data. Now for the findings. Uh, Eleven studies were selected for the review three quantitative and eight qualitative studies. From the analysis, there were two overarching themes were identified, uh, women-centered care and medicalization of the childbirth. Medicalization of the childbirth with unnecessary technologies can be viewed to exist in direct opposition to centered care delivery with culturally sensitive care, where women are empowered and midwives lead care in childbirth. For the first, for the first theme uh, in this paper, uh, the women-centered care, in the papers, many women would, would have appreciated the feeling of control during the childbirth process. Women indicated their need for families' emotional support and their mother's attendance during labor. However, it is forbidden in most public hospitals. And actually, this is the policy in most Arabic, country, uh, Arabic countries, yes. For the second thing, uh, medicalization of the childbirth. Women experienced a, a number of routine practices that were unnecessary, harmful, and non-indicated procedures during labor and birth. Those uh, involved induction, artificial rupture of membrane, a continuous fetal heart rate monitoring, frequent vaginal examinations, and episiotomy, enema, and shaving. Dehumanization of the childbirth were also reported in terms of lack of respect, care, 
poor peer, uh, poor pain management, lack of necessary information from skilled birth uh, assistants, and lack of uh, privacy. The medicalization of a childbirth was observed in the widespread use unnecessary procedures which affected uh, negatively women's control in the childbirth process except in terms of dehumanize, dehumanizing childbirth. In, in conflict areas and during wartime such as in Gaza in December 2008 to January 2009, there was no safe place for childbirth, as reported by Wick and Hassan in 2012. Women in this area reported multiple barriers to accessing a suitable birth place. They reported no near safe place for uh, of a childbirth or access to nearby health birth attendants and fear of unknown about their families and their labor status during the uh, constant chilling. Uh, uh, this is reported by the women uh, from Gaza uh, that the women, the women has, uh, have facing the war uh, to uh, 29, uh, 2008 to 2009. In addition, there was the impossibility of knowing when and where the bombing would take place, and so safety guarantees were impossible. Midwives also reported trying to help laboring women with only simple and ill prepared equipment. Uh, now for the reflection of my experience in Gaza to support the result of this paper. In 2012, I was working in the largest uh, governmental hospital. Uh, it's called Shifa Hospital in Gaza Strip. Uh, the, Ministry of Histal, uh, the Ministry of Health in Palestine sought to employ midwives in maternity services with WHO cooperation to build midwifery lead care during uh, training the midwives with the basic and advanced skills. Midwives in Gaza are authorized to manage low-risk cases of laboring women during delivery care as defined by International, International Confederation of Midwives, ICM. However, the midwives in Gaza are unable to order any procedure without reference to doctors in spite of WHO recommendations for midwifery lead care in Palestine. There is severe pressure work with high case loads. For example, during my work there were more than 12 cases with only three midwives every shift, one physician and one obstetrician. Doctors request oxytocin infusion for most cases and visitomy used routinely for most primary gravida. Some doctors uh, use their previous experience and their old knowledge without guidance according to WHO recommendations and evidence-based practice to deal with the emergency. The women also are restricted in mobility and drinking, uh, drinking during labor. Therefore, the midwives and the doctors evacuated women's blubber artificially by plain catheter. All women give birth in light to me position and I can say this is the only position the women can have to try birth in, Gaza, in, in the public hospitals in Gaza and companion support to attend labor is forbidden due to open area in labor world in which the patient's feet uh, are separated by curtains or movable walls. However, it's allowed in the private health facilities to have social support during childbirth. The overload of work results is insufficient with free support for every woman. To conclude, my experience in Gaza 
was relevant and consistent with the findings of this paper or this review, the medicalization of the childbirth and using unnecessary harmful procedures in post-conflict region were also um, relevant to the two overarching themes identified in the results chapter. As a result, women's preferences are critical sources of knowledge to explore and consider in such situations. Now for the key conclusion. To counter the effects of intersecting lines of medicalization and technology power over women's experiences of a childbirth in this context, health policy makers Decision makers, midwives, and other healthcare professionals need to work with this available evidence of women's experience, experiences and narrative account of the childbirth to achieve high maternity quality care. The implications for practice. Um, it's important to involve all stakeholders, including midwives, maternity care professionals, and women, in efforts to improve current practice and also to eliminate unnecessary procedures. There is a need to develop policy in the Arab countries and update WHO recommendations with evidence on the subjective lived experiences of delivery and the childbirth to achieve high maternal quality care and women's satisfaction. Also, the decision makers need to uh, empower midwives in their community, either geographically or socially, to be able to provide their care of, uh, for marginal groups or in time of a crisis. Especially now, the situation in Arab countries is not stable. Uh, also, uh, there is a, there's a need for planning for emergency care is essential by mapping the, um, uh, the availability place of midwives, providing them with basic medical equipment and medicine at home and in the clinics to or in order to facilitate their care to women's need during a trial birth. The future research. Uh, we need the future research uh, to focus on sub how to support uh, women and in supporting a childbirth experiences uh, from a few points of skilled birth attendance and maternity care stuff. A future studies could also explore in more detail the challenges of a provide, a pro, uh, providing evidence-based practice to reduce medicalization of a childbirth in terms of uh, legitimacy of subjective lived experiences. A future reviews and research which focus on whole childbirth experience, including a antenatal or intrapartum or postpartum period are recommended. A greater efforts and evidence is also called for women uh, rights of safe birth, uh, respectful health care and accessible and available access to care during complex and war time. Now I just put some pictures. Uh, was taken by Al Jazeera. This picture was in in uh, the last war, the last I can say the last Israeli attack on Gaza um, in 2014, exactly in July 2014. Um, the first picture is from the Shifa Shifa Hospital Maternity Unit. Uh, during war time. We can expect 25 to 50 women over a 24-hour period, and also the medical supplies are running short due to ongo uh, due to ongoing Israeli uh, uh, offensive on Gaza. In, uh, in other meaning, 
a Gaza uh, is still under blockage by Israel. So this blockage also uh, limit the medical supplies and we have deficiencies in basic equipment. The second picture from Shifa Hospital 2. As the ambulance made its way to the hospital, this lady called Hanan al Mahithin continued to bleed and was rushed to surgery, to CS surgery, where her baby girl was delivered by cesarean but unfortunately died at birth. Afraid for her condition, Hanan was not told the news of her daughter's death until a day after the surgery. Hanan said, when they told me, I felt like I couldn't breathe. I wanted to cry, but I was too tired. Too tired. Uh, I think this is the last picture. It's Mariam Junit, 39 year, uh, years, uh, years old. It's a mother of eight, and now she's expecting her ninth child. As I mentioned in the, uh, the, the introduction, the fertility rate um, in Gaza, or in Palestine in general, in general and in Gaza, it's, uh, it's high. I can say it's 4.6 4. Uh, 4. Uh, baby women. And this is the references. Now I can say, oh, oh, I finished. Okay, and now I am happy to hear uh, for any questions or any comments. Thank you very much, Hiba, for your Thank you. interesting uh, presentation. There was one question uh, in the chat uh, right in from Monica. She asked uh, if women's mother are allowed in uh, during birth uh, in the hospital. Yes, uh, actually this is uh, a policy in the uh, governmental and public hospital. Uh, we ca they cannot bear um, uh, birth uh, uh, companions, mothers or uh, any relatives. Uh, because the the area of the hospital with the with the labor women is very crowded, and if the hospital allowed for every woman to have uh, her relatives, it would be more crowded. So this is why they um, uh, avoid this. And uh, I can say there's another another reason. Uh, there's another reason was uh, it's uh, I, I think it's so it's for cultural it's uh, related to cultural beliefs. Um, some husbands maybe uh, refuse to be to attend the childbirth. Maybe they are shy or something like that. So maybe this is the I can say this is the, the reasons. Yes, is there another another question? Um, so. Um I would like. Is the answer was it clear for everyone? I hope the answer is clear. No, no. They will ask if it's not clear. So uh, <laughs> okay. it was clear. So um, I ask our participants to put in more questions to Heba, while uh, the, uh, our participants are in. in um, ah, okay. Uh, Margaret is asking: Do all women go to hospital for birth, or are there a birth at home? Okay, actually we have two systems. We have public hospitals and the private hospitals. Uh, at the moment we don't have a home birth uh, except for women. Um, she cannot go to the hospital and so suddenly have birth at the, at the home. But till now we, 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 we don't support the home birth in Gaza and I think this is bad but we, we, we will uh, f for my side uh, I think it's good to to support a home birth but uh, to answer your question uh, at the moment the woman can have birth at a public hospital or private hospital just okay thanks Margaret <laughs> okay so Please put in other questions for Hiba. At, um, I would like to 
ask the question, what is about the, the breastfeeding rates in, in your uh, region? Yeah. Um, okay, about uh, breastfeeding. Yeah, yeah, I, sorry, you, did you ask about the breastfeeding? Yeah, breastfeeding, the, the, the rates of breastfeeding in, in... Yeah, the rate uh, of breastfeeding in Palestine is actually high. It's 96%. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's considered high, I think, 96. Um, uh, the, we have a cultural be beliefs about the breastfeeding, so if the mother at the beginning have uh, or facing difficulties with uh, with the breastfeeding her mother or uh, the, the her mother in law or uh, her relatives will support her to breastfeed her, her to, to, to breastfeed her baby okay um so um okay Arkita is asking in the rate of cesarean sections in in uh, in uh, in your region, in your country. Okay, actually, um, I uh, I don't have accurate percent about cesarean sections rates, but I, I can say uh, the normal vaginal delivery is more than cesarean section, and usually the the women prefer uh, vaginal birth delivery. Uh, and um, just for urgent reasons uh, or accidental reasons, the the woman referred for CS. But I, I am afraid I don't have accurate number. So, but is it is it is it often uh, in in your experience, or uh, do women ask about uh, for CS? Uh, no, it's it, it, it's not often. Uh, because we usually uh, refer the, the the women for for normal childbirth, but for some reasons, for example, if the woman had a uh, at the bottom hemorrhage or um, accidental hemorrhage, yeah, that the lady should be referred to CS. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's a good question. Um, are there and why the type units? All um, in my country, there is a uh, Norwalk. It's called uh, Norwalk. It's a uh, it's a project supported by Norway. Uh, it started last year to support midwife lead care unit in Gaza, and it started just in one hospital. Uh, it's in the Chiba Hospital because it's the largest uh, hospital in Gaza and I think they started in this hospital because if this project um, succeeds in, in this hospital they will follow uh, uh, other hospitals with the, with the, the project. Uh, this unit actually uh, just for low risk cases uh, the midwives can, um, can, uh, can care with women uh, with women uh, low risk, consider as low, low risk, uh, the women don't have any medical problems. Uh, and wife can care with it uh, without any interruption from the doctors or uh, uh, obstetricians. Uh, the midwife in this unit uh, don't use oxytocin, don't use um, episiotomy. Uh, and the midwife using a birth, ex a birth, a birth, a birth deep exercise, full exercise, uh, and they ask the woman to choose um, uh, to choose which position usually prefer to uh, to, 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 to to have uh, her childbirth. But w most women, as I can see, they try, they um, choose um, light light to me position. I think because they think because as they used to to, to have a childbirth by 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 light to me, maybe they think this is the the best position for them. 
if we try to to uh, to learn them that you can choose any position you like mm -hmm. um okay thank you very much um now see let's see if there are any more questions from <clears throat> from our participants um so um what about the okay. educate of, of mid, midwives uh, in the Gaza? Um, are there enough possibilities to get well educated as a midwife in your region? Okay, we have two colleges um, uh, teach uh, midwifery programs. The midwifery program uh, it's in Gaza it's uh, for four years. Uh, for example, uh, at my side, I have a bachelor from the Islamic University of Gaza, and my bachelor was uh, four years. Uh, I, st I started a clinical uh, training in the hospital from the second year, uh, and then uh, and so continue the training in third and fourth uh, fourth year. Then after graduating, uh, we have period called eternal ship period like 300 hours uh, in this period uh, uh, to, uh, to, to to make sure that I am uh, to make sure that I am good with wife uh, after graduating and I cannot take the certificate without finishing this internal ship period so in Gaza we have two uh, programs uh, two Mudufi programs in Gaza. The first one was started in 2001 in a College of Palestine called College of Palestine, and the second one started in 2008 at the University at the Islamic University of Gaza. Uh, and also we have uh, another program for midwife. It's, it's called practical midwife. The midwife um, uh, they can be a practical midwife for two years. It's called diploma midwife. I mean, I, I think maybe the, the the word diploma is different for you because diploma is known for certificate. Diploma in Gaza it means that the midwife. Uh, uh, has learned for uh, for two years to be a midwife, and actually, uh, the practical midwife who has two years, uh, she can uh, deal with women, uh, support women, but for example, uh, she, she cannot uh, uh, provide uh, help in the childbirth. Uh, just she can help in postnatal and genital units. Aesthetic. Okay. Um, what about um, uh, midwives um, associations in in Gaza? Um, how, how are you organized in your region? Uh, okay, actually, we don't have a special organization for midwives in Gaza. We have an association called Nursing Association. Uh, this, nurse, uh, this nursing association uh, can cover the midwifery issues. Uh, just, uh, just that. So we, we don't have um, a unit or, uh, or organization special for, uh, for midwives. Uh, and I think this is um, a weak point for the midwives in Gaza. But for example, if I need help uh, in, in some issues, I can go to this association or I can go to the Ministry of Health in Gaza. Uh, I can see another question, another question Christian. Uh, sorry, yeah, it's, okay. Yeah, how long do uh, women stay in hospital after childbirth? Okay, uh, for for women, uh, uh, for women has uh, normal childbirth. Uh, if the woman uh, is the prime gravida, uh, she can stay for like four to six hours, and the woman then after that ask to to, to discharge. Uh, for the multi-gravida, the women usually actually stay just for two 
to uh, to four hours and most i can say uh, most of women stay just for two to three hours after normal childbirth uh, but after uh, cs if the woman has cs uh, she she should be stay at least for two days uh, in the hospital and she can go home a third day or fourth day Yes. And, and and two two midwives um to your two midwives um help women at home uh, like visit visiting uh, them at home in the in the first weeks after the birth. And is it paid for? Yes, them? we. Uh, okay, the having childbirth in public hospitals it's free, no paid, no money to pay by uh, by the families it's free. Uh, uh, but in the private hospitals, it's uh, it's uh, it's it isn't free. For the supporting women after they going to uh, to home, yes, we have community midwife. Uh, the community midwife uh, working in the postnatal clinics, and they have regular visits. Uh, the midwives have regular visits. To, to to women's home uh, to support women and uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, to provide um, some health instructions about childbirth about caring a baby uh, caring herself after childbirth uh, and so if the baby needs uh, vaccines or something like that um, yes that's it. Uh, so there's a question, Christian. It's about uh, how is the bonding and the skin to skin supported? Uh, I am pleased to say that we support bonding and we support the skin to skin to skin uh, contact uh, after childbirth directly. We have this, uh, and before we do this, we ask uh, we tell women that we. Uh, you would like to, to put your baby in your uh, in your abdomen. Some women fears at the beginning, and some women's uh, no, they, they they used to have that. Uh, and for the bonding, uh, I can say we have breastfeeding uh, at the first hour of a childbirth. Uh, most women uh, breastfeed their babies because I said this is a cultural belief about breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I was going to ask you, but you said that the units get really, really busy sometimes. Um, and how do you cope? But how do you mm -hmm. cope with that when you're flooded with women? Christine? Oh my God. Hello, can you hear us? Okay. Eva, do you hear us? Okay. Sorry, Christine. No problem. Christine? Uh, please, please put again this, the, the question. She, question. Can you hear me? Uh, Can you hear me, Hiba? Hiba, do you, do, do you, do you hear us? Hello? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, what, what, what's your question, sorry? Um, uh, please repeat your I th question. I think I have, I think I had interruption in the uh, uh, disconnected internet just for a few seconds. What, what did you ask, sorry? Oh, sorry. I said, um, you said in your presentation that um, the units often get very, very busy. How do you cope as a midwife with um, a sudden, with lots of women coming in? Are you able to see my staff in or? I look at your house. 
Please write, uh, type in Sarah, uh, uh, type in the, the, the question. Okay, okay. So I think I had uh, disconnected it and it's just for a few seconds. Uh, okay, what's the last question? What are the women's overall experience of typical midwifery care in both the midwife, midwife and public hospital? Okay. Uh, actually, um, we need to study. We need uh, to uh, to do study and research about this point about experience of, uh, of typically uh, of typical midwifery care in both the midwife uh, did you, uh, did you and public hospital. But I just can give you some um, highlights points about uh, about that. Uh, I can say sometimes you find uh, women satisfied about her child, her childbirth if she had uh, if she has a uh, safe childbirth without any complications and some women maybe yes uh, dis dissatisfied about about her childbirth if she's having uh, complications or problems like uh, perineal tears uh, postpartum homage or these things but in general uh, I can say it's maybe half half uh, yeah yeah I, I think I, I can say yeah it's maybe half half that the women uh, sometimes satisfied uh, about the, the role of the midwife and the public hospital but sometimes not really I think it's, it's it depends I hope this is is it clear for for your uh, question. Thank you. So, uh, please uh, put in other questions for Hiba for our fantastic guest from the Gaza Strip. Um, um, so um, I, I, I would like uh, yeah yeah Sorry. continue question continue continue yeah. no that's fine continue. So, uh, what, what is interesting for me uh, while I'm googling um, I just found uh, Midwives with the, the organization Midwives for Peace, which is a grassroots uh, organization. Uh, do you know about it? Uh, sorry, I didn't follow your question. Uh, the, the, um, the organization Midwives for Peace. Uh -huh. Organization for uh, yeah, Midwives for Peace. Um, I, I, I have no idea about this actually. No problem. Okay, so we have another. Um, so sorry about that, but yeah, I think it's good to also to have a look about it. Yeah. Um, we have another question. How do you cope with the extremely busy unit? As you said, there can be up to 50 to 50, 40 to 50 women in 24 hours. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah uh, thank you for this question. It's a good question actually. Um, really it's uh, it's very over road work. Uh, um, we try we try to to manage. Uh, we try if if need help, uh, we ca we can call midwives from other units uh, or uh, midwives who uh, who's in the call. Uh, we try to organize the the work with the women. Uh, for example. We just take the, the, the women, so we, we have words, as you know, we have antenatal words, intrapartum words, postpartum words. So, uh, usually the antenatal words, I mean the antenatal words, the, the woman with, uh, who they are in the first stage word, uh, who, who, I mean who they are in the first stage of labor. They are in uh, they are in antenatal word. Uh, this word department uh, or this word is usually busy. So we just 
uh, take the women uh, to the labor room who are nearly to be fully or the, the women, for example, 7 to 8 cm dilated, cervical dilated. This is one of, uh, of the methods just to organize the labor room and to organize the first stage world. Uh, uh, and as, as I, uh, I mentioned before, uh, sometimes for uh, just uh, just a way, uh, the women just stay after childbirth from two to four hours. So after two or four hours, uh, they there uh, there is space for uh, for another woman. So yeah, by the by this simple method, we can just organize and. Uh, uh, control the this overload and the pressure work, uh, and also uh, the physicians and the, ob the uh, ob obstetrician they help us um, uh, in the high risk uh, world, uh, also to to reduce this over this overload pressure work. So uh, we have another question yeah. from from Julia, uh, who is asking, "What is the midwife to patient ratio?" Uh, okay, uh, I know internationally it should be midwife uh, one midwife per one woman, but in Gaza, I can say one midwife per seven to ten midwives. Uh, sorry, one midwife to seven to ten patients in maternity departments in intranet in intrapartum, uh, anti antenatal and postnatal, and uh, uh, maybe you think that we we have shortage of the flood wife. Yes, yes, we have shortage, but but also. Uh, we have graduated midwives in Gaza, but because of the economic status of the of the Ministry of Health, they, they the Ministry of Health of Health cannot employ uh, more and more midwives because they have problems with their uh, with their funds. So they just just they put, for example, and that we have actually two midwives per every shift. Sometimes two or sometimes three. Labor room we have three midwives per uh, every shift. Uh, uh, first stage where postnatal uh, where uh, obstetric ICU we have obstetric ICU. Uh, uh, gynecological department high risk departments we have just two midwives per every shift. So uh, yes, uh, this is wh what I mean. Uh, when I said overload work, uh, do you have a separate assessment unit or is this included with the same unit? Uh, sorry, what can I ask you? What do you need? Where, what do you need with a separate assessment unit? Is that you mean the assessment for the midwives, the midwives' paper, uh, different from a doctor's paper? That that what do you mean? Uh, uh, initial phone call. Do you have a separate assessment unit or initial assessment of presenting women? Yes, we have initial assessment in the reception. Uh, if the women, for example, come with with labor pain, they will come. Uh, to the admission department, and they, they, there, we, uh, the women, the midwives in the admission department will assess uh, the, uh, uh, the lady, and if the lady is labor, if the lady uh, has cervical dilatation more than 4 cm, more than 4 to 5 cm, they will admit it to the first stage uh, world. This is what I mean with the. Uh, this is what I uh, we have. But is that uh, is that what do you mean with the initial assessment? 
Um, I'm uh, about you and so I um, I saw. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Sorry, sorry. We, we, um, I'm afraid we are at the end of, of our time. I would like to, to thank you very, very okay. much for your input and for answering the, the questions. Um, I wish you everything the best for your, um, for your work on a, a very um, hard um, um, situation and all the best for, for you and for for your family uh, thank you very much to to be part of this and i want to be thankful to be uh, also that i had a chance to to get to know to you uh, thank you to everybody here in this room um, now i will give over to to sarah once again and everything good from austria Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Brilliant, Christian. Thank you so much for that. Right, I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping and save all the chat. And you are welcome to pop off and have a 10 minute break and stretch your legs while I tidy up this room. Um, we will start again at, um, at the hour. Okay, thank you.